So the work of the program aims to develop novel approaches to design, manufacture, use, and life cycle within architecture and through creative engagement with robotics, material systems, and artificial intelligence. We're running the program over two semesters. Fall semester has two half uh, semester length studios and then a one full semester length studio in the spring. Each of these design studios is predominantly working through uh, robotically manufactured prototypes, along with also other design speculations that are developed through digital modeling and computational methods. To begin the studio, um, each one of the students chose a sculpture by either Nam Bubo or Antoine Pevsner. They're the two brothers um, that were Russian constructivists who wrote the Realistic Manifesto in 1920. All of these sculptures take on um, the principles of the ruled surface, which is uh, in geometry is a surface that is constructed by sweeping one single line. Each of the students understood that geometry and started to work with it and start to carve out these bone blocks, but then they were looking at the path of the rails and adding their own sort of custom profiles to produce these, what we're calling micro reliefs or tooling. Each one of the teams took the kind of geometrical signatures. Then they worked with a kind of a branch of AI, which is deep learning, uh, specifically convolutional neural networks where they started to introduce these geometric signatures into those neural networks. And, you know, there's a certain latent or hidden space between what is being put in and what then starts to result here. So these are kind of examples of that kind of latent space that operates between those geometric signatures of the original sculptures to kind of reconfigure them in entirely different ways. So these are, these are kind of the four teams, some of their process and you'll hear more specifics about that. And then the final sort of phase of the studio was to, uh, you know, then work with them as ceiling proposals and to produce a one-to-one -one, uh, physical mock-up of that to as a proof of concept of how that would be produced using the robotic wire cutter. And here are samples of the four uh, groups and these are their um, prototypes under here. My name is Gray Wardinger. I received my BRC at Pratt Institute years ago. And then uh, since then, up until eight weeks ago, I was working at Princeton University managing their robotics lab. Hi, uh, I'm Ricky, and um, I graduated from uh, USD this year um, and super excited to start this program. We were able to isolate a specific topological trait present in the sculpts, which highlight the aforementioned static forces. To create the source material to operate with a convolutional neural network, or CNN, with the intent of working with this AI to generate a non authorial composition of topological traits, rulings, and form. Once a specific output was identified, which closely met these criteria, we chose a local region to develop further, using this instance as a prototype to explore the original questions of material, speed, and weight at the detail level. To identify these keystones as singular to the overall design, they are toolpathed differently than that of the dominant spiraling surfaces. Instead of a chiseled effect with concave forms, a more continuous rippling is used with convex forms protruding from the surface, and were developed largely through the CNN with its latent space. This feedback loop created a more constrained and detailed final proposal with greater clarity of the original topological feature as well as a sharper redistribution of speed and weight through the toolings. In 1920, Pevsner and Gabot were using the line to affirm direction and rhythm of form. Now, 100 years later, and with the implementation of AI collaboration and robotic fabrication, this project returns to this affirmation with a newfound significance. Tailored formal variation inhabited and perceived with an unfolding depth is imagined and tested. You know, how much are you wanting to control and how much are you allowing the algorithm to, to play some of those things out? The you know, first thing that I like at the very beginning, the consideration of the two things, the, the foam is the medium, is the material, but also the medium of it to really produce the interpretation of the geometry. And also really looking at the robot as well as the medium part of it. And the combination of both, because it's really, they both had a certain moments between the material itself 
and also the robot it really gets a moment of agency, which really starts to be developed later, which I really like that idea of conceptualizing the robot that way. Hello, my name is Matthew White. Prior to joining the MSD RAS program at the University of Pennsylvania, I had been working professionally in New York City for the past seven and a half years. I'm Claire Moriarty. I came to UPenn's MSD RAS program after graduating from the Maryland Institute College of Art with a BFA in Architectural Design. We were both drawn to pieces by Pesner that were similar in form, fabrication, and materiality, yet differed in both the overall proportions and year that they were constructed. Matt chose surface developable, fabricated in 1941, while Claire chose victory column, fabricated in 1946. Both pieces were conceptually conceived as a ruled surface defined by two rails, then fabricated out a series of brass or bronze rods that were soldered together to create the overall form. Simplistic in concept, the shape of the rails created two unique conditions or topological signatures that aligned with the realist manifesto. As one moves around the piece, the high part creates an illusion that the surface is transforming, continuously opening a perspective to what is behind, implying a sense of motion and continuous depth. While the intersecting surfaces, emphasized by the visualization of each ruling, create a type of one-point perspective, drawing one deeper into the piece. These two topological signatures used in unison to create a dynamic relationship between the viewer and the object. Transposing these concepts from surface to volume create a series of challenges in both the digital and the physical pieces, particularly how intersecting surfaces can be created when cutting foam with a hot wire instead of splicing and soldering bronze rod together. Ultimately, the piece was able to be fabricated out of two open rails. We utilize a variety of section cuts of our individual projects to create this input image, allowing us to maintain our original topological signatures when it was applied through the CNN. This resulted in an autonomous interpretation of the signatures across the field, which was then further explored through the ceiling. Used in a directional manner, used to subtly draw one's eye in and through the piece. The ripples on the surface are a representation of the curvature of the um, rails, and so uh, they um, transition between um, more linear areas into uh, the most extreme uh, curvature and then back out to the, um, uh, the more linear areas. You know, everybody was asked to kind of develop a, a sort of uh, a tactic in, in this kind of bespoke tooling, right, of modifying the profiles. Uh, and we've seen, you know, three of them. This one's really interesting, you know, and they spent a long time. Basically, those ripples, what you're alluding to, to the kind of subtleness to them or where they, let's say, end up breaking out and becoming much more um, figural is directly indexed to the curvature of the surfaces. I'm curious to see how you work with the tendency of a tool and um, how you challenge or... or um, uh, take that tendency to either a different direction or, um, you know, really lean into the tendency of this particular um, machine learning algorithm of the CNN. Hi, um, my name is Gang Liu. Um, I graduated from University of Tennessee, Knoxville last year and I directly go to this program. Hi, my name is Yuan. Um, my I got my uh, Bachelor of Architecture in Cal Poly so. Uh, I'm a new grad, just even graduated in June. Gabo and Pepsner have similar opinions on combining mathematics and art, but had different techniques on creating road surfaces. One focused on math surface formulation, the other focused on primitive railings and in between surfaces. For us, both for specific qualities in Gabo's and hyperbolic twisting in Pabsner's inspired us for our next design proposal, an algorithm that captures the combined sculpture renderings overall rough aesthetics of the style as input and produces recognizable objects from the content image. With these disciplined and diverse design experiments, we decided to focus on extracting styles from a fusion image of the front view renderings with the two sculptures and approximating a set of pattern round spotted images for content images. We have a distinct condition between figure and ground, where our main figure, the so-called planets, have strong existence over the ground, the shallow reliefs. For a human perspective looking at the ceiling, the round profile is less obvious, 
than to reflecting ceiling view. Pepsner's and Gabo Pursue Sculpture are based on mathematical theory and functions, but at a certain point, they deviate from the strict math functions to recreate their own art piece. We learn from the special quality of Gabo and Pepsner's sculpture, trying to internalize their technique to our own understanding. With the aid of the style transfer as a rapid design tool, we will credit our piece as achieving more innovations in geometric composition and spatial quality. My name is Dion Kim, and I'm coming to the Richmond MSD Ross program from Iowa State University. My name is Riley Studebaker, and I am coming to the Weitzman MSD RAS program from the Virginia Tech cause. Specifically, we structure explicit visual signatures as embedded information put into a latent space image, which is then fed into a convolutional neural network, generating learned arrangements of the embedded information. With a rule set taken from the analysis of Gabot's sculptures, we are able to extract instructions for novel and meaningful three-dimensional geometric relationships. Our selected zone's form was a result of logic from ruled surface sculptures, organization from convolutional neural networking, and the process of robotic hot wire fabrication. Building from our combination of a geometric logic with neural networking, we proposed a 900 square foot high density foam bespoke suspended ceiling, generated from and indicative of ruled surface sculpture, convolutional neural networking, and robotic arm fabrication. I kind of see the architect's role as constructing or orchestrating events, events that kind of operate through different media. So I think the thing that would be driving my uh, design and aesthetic decisions here, it's more about character, like a character that's somehow unifying those different things, you know, form, material, um, tooling, computation, computational processes like the CNN. Aesthetic character or design character is something that kind of moves across media. You can talk about these works from Deleuzean Francis Bacon perspective, just as well as you can talk about them in a kind of silhouette and um, kind of like process-based, like um, conceptual art perspective. And that's what I kind of like refer to as like the, um, this really productive moment where we can talk about both of those things um, with, with, with one architectural proposal. And I really do like the idea of character because character, if you think of a character, is a combination of qualities. So it's really, you know, in a way, this this kind of process of the studio really demystifies a lot of what all years the misconceptions about how these workflows interact and how these obvious authors or these agencies really begin to interact. And I think this really tells, talks about the idea that it really becomes a very inclusive process. And it's really about the kind of control combination of the of combination of intelligences that makes the process really interesting. This is a productive pedagogy that really establishes what the 21st century should be about. It's about this, these characters or the inclusive qualities, et cetera. And we sort of select our control over them as opposed to, you know, sort of falling into any kind of sort of linear processes, determined processes, et cetera. So it really kind of begins to build that kind of um, agency in the future, which is really absolutely essential. And it's really, yeah, it's about the qualities, about, it's about the, it's about the character.